Hi, welcome to my multimodal argument on universal healthcare. First things first, I'd like to thank all my audience for being here and being willing to listen to my ideas and solutions to this current problem in our country. Before I talk about my solutions, I think it's important to look at where America is as a country right now. I decided to put this image in my presentation because it shows the medium household income for the United States. Now in this picture, it says that 26 out of the 50 states in this country, uh, the families are averaging less than $60,000 per year. Many people think of the United States as a wealthy nation, but overall, many families are struggling in their day-to-day -day life for a variety of things, including healthcare. Along with the crippling costs of everyday life, families have to deal with the burden of the healthcare costs. Currently in America, the healthcare costs about $11,000 per year per person. While if you look at this chart right here, it shows that the average of cost of healthcare in many different countries is a little over $5,000 per person per year. In America, we expect our prices to be the lowest with the highest quality of care. But as it's shown right here, this is always not the case. With our high costs per year, we expect the best quality of care out of every country in this world. Although this is what we expect, this is not the case. The Peter G. Peterson Foundation did a comparison between many different countries and many different health outcomes in these countries. For example, they talk about life expectancy at birth, infant mortality, unmanaged diabetes, and heart attack mortality. America ranks very close to last in many of these categories, except for just one. While on the other hand, this image from the Commonwealth Fund is a study comparing the overall healthcare ranking of 11 different countries. This study talks about access to care, affordability, efficiency, and many more things to, in the end, rank all of these countries. Clearly, the U.S. is behind in many of these different characteristics, and they're in the last place, behind Canada, France, U.K., and many more countries. Now, with all problems in our world, there are many people to blame. And I believe we should put the blame on a lot of our political powers currently in our government. This image shown right here to the left is currently what I believe is a very powerful thing that is happening in our government right now. People continually butt heads and they cannot agree on anything and it only hurts the citizens that they're trying to help. Along with attempting to help our citizens, this is a chart showing the wealth disparity in our country. It is very obvious that the bottom 90% is struggling to survive and fighting for the scraps while the top 10% is being able to enjoy their lives. Now I would like to go a little more into the solutions that I have prepared for all of you here today. I first want to start off with an image to the left with the countries that are currently in green and not in green. This is a very powerful image because the countries in green are actually ones with a universal health care type system. And this clearly shows that among many well-developed countries in our world, they are able to have access to universal health care. In this situation, America is currently an outlier and not a leader in the health care system because they are not labeled in green. Also, this image right here is showing the national health spending uh, according to our budget and what we spend on things. America is currently spending about 17% of their yearly budget on health care, while many other countries do not even reach higher numbers like that. For example, the average number on this chart is 8.6% of their total budget. Now the reason I have Andrew Yang in my audience today is because I believe he can change the world, truly. 
Now a little background into who Andrew Yang is. He is currently a rising political power who has been introducing many new ideas that people have never thought of before. For example, his most popular idea is currently the universal basic income, which guarantees $1,000 per person per family every month in the year. I believe he's on the right track to creating a new environment and new way to pay for our healthcare. For example, after his presidential run this year, he has started a company called Humanity Forward. This project aims at giving families $1,000 per month, just like his UBI bill. I believe this is one of the best solutions to our current prices because along with the 1K per year, he could essentially eliminate the healthcare costs for families. Now, this is also a very enticing option for my other audience members, who is Mitch McConnell right over there, because he does not have to be involved really at all. I believe that the, uh, the government has very little to do with uh, non-profit organizations like this one right here. The only thing that they can do is incentivize these programs and help other business people uh, start inventing new ways, new projects to help these people and continue giving them money. Now this is good because there are many compromises that have to occur for laws and bills to pass. And in this situation, we're only encouraging different business people from all around the country and the world to start giving away charitable donations to people instead of food or clothing or other things. Now, as I talked about earlier, the politicians in our country are very split between the middle in almost all situations. I think it's important for Mitch McConnell right here and many other people on the political spectrum to try to find compromises within our country. Although I can't expect all people to make compromises, I believe there are different solutions that I can address directly to Mitch McConnell in this case. The reason I would like to talk directly to Mitch McConnell is because he currently does not believe in a universal health care plan in America. Now, Mitch McConnell does encourage a free market approach to our country, and I believe this is the way that we can change our world without implementing a plan that he would not like to support. For example, I would like to use Amazon as a prime example of upward mobility in this country. Amazon has not always been the biggest country, and we know that. But Amazon was able to fight their competition, and they were able to provide better products, cheaper products, and better customer service. And with all of those characteristics and many more, they were able to skyrocket themselves to the top and be one of the biggest countries, biggest businesses in this country and world as well. Now, I would like to take this approach of competition and put it within our healthcare system. For example, I would like to, there to be a reward for many different hospitals and frontline workers that are putting in the work and getting better results. For example, hospitals that have better quality of care, better patient recovery, and better overall outcomes when people come are going to be getting more business than another hospital that does not care as much. This is gonna require the smaller hospital that does not do as well to up their own attributes and everything that they do in order to get on par with the better hospital. Inevitably, this competition between hospitals and between doctors will cut the costs and be able to provide more quality of care for the patients in the end. I believe that this is a very good solution to this problem because we do not have to go fully into the universal health care type system. Mitch McConnell is currently the Senate Majority Leader for the Republicans. And I believe if he does not want to implement a universal health care system, then he will not because he is in control. This is a way that we could uh, cut costs, maybe even improve our health care, and just make it overall better for all people instead of just a select few. Also, another enticing option for you, Mitch McConnell, is to rearrange what our current budget is.
clearly this chart on the left shows that we spend a significant amount of money per year on our defense. Clearly our defense is important, as we all know, but I believe that there are many things that have to change within our own country before we focus on other countries. We currently have our flaws, clearly, and it is very important that we fix ourselves before we try to fix the rest of the world. So I believe that we can cut into this chart right here and spend much more money on healthcare. Throwing money at a problem may not help, but it couldn't do any worse than what we're at right now. Along with that pie chart right there, I decided to include uh, potential costs of Medicare for All for different plans that have been introduced in our country. For example, the Urban Institute and Centers for Health and Economy both expect about 32 to 36 trillion dollars uh, to be implemented for a universal health care coverage type system. And a more well known would be Bernie Sanders who also agrees with this, but has a lower and cheaper way to do this. Now it is important to look at these numbers and understand that we do not have the money currently to fix this problem, but there are ways without taxing uh, disproportionately that we can solve this problem. Now with this last slide, I'd like to talk to all of you in the audience. Clearly we know that in every problem there are pros and cons, and I would like to talk a little bit about the pros and cons so we know that going into our solutions. So for example, the cons of universal health care are as follows. Many people may dislike the idea because it forces healthy people to pay for the health care of non-healthy people. Also along with that, many people may uh, stop caring about their health just thinking that they'll get it paid for by someone else or the government. Along with that, many other countries, although they have high quality of care, they do report high wait times that may limit some people from going to the hospital or getting saved in time. Although there are cons, there are inevitably pros as well. For example, this will obviously lower health care for the economy. Also, it will force hospitals and doctors to provide the same standard of care for every person, not someone with more money getting better care. Along with that, it will administrate, eliminate administrative costs due to the elimination of private insurances. So I would just like to use these pros and cons to learn and to be better from it. There are many countries that have implemented systems that we can use a mix of that will help our country in ways that we have not seen before. I hope all of you have listened to my solutions and I hope that one day we will make a change to benefit all of America and save the healthcare system that we currently have. Thank you very much.